In this video, we introduce our monograph by illustrating why seriation, or ordering by size, is an important developmental issue. Here is a four and a half year old boy, Hubert. He is about to attempt something that you or I would find trivially easy. Simply to put the blocks in order of size next to one another in a row, as just demonstrated to him. This task is known as size seriation. It was first developed by Jean Piaget in the 1940s as one of his many tests of cognitive development. Children under the age of five are likely to fail altogether, even with a small number of objects. A typical response is to try to make a mini-series of large or small objects, just like Hubert is doing here. But they seem unable to put them together into a connected set. Hubert is having particular difficulty with the second biggest. He seems unable to place it next to the biggest one, as if he doesn't actually have a concept of biggest and second biggest. Hubert is not typical of an average four-year-old in that he seems unsatisfied with his incorrect series and he perseveres as if he knows there must be a correct solution. As you will see, he does get there in the end. If you look at Hubert's body language very carefully, you will see that he solves the problem by very tentatively placing the second biggest next to the biggest. And a question we asked in our research is whether concepts such as second biggest emerge from the act of ordering by size. A more typical four-year-old response is demonstrated here by Stephen. He finishes with an incorrect series even though he is trying hard. And even though he knows it is wrong, he is unable to fix it. Without uh, that one. You could do it without that one. Do you think so? Yeah. Okay, take that one away. Right there. Put that one near. I like the one. That's the one. <laughs> I like the one that's the best one. You could do it with that one then, can you? Uh, no. These two are too big. I can just do it with these two. Things change dramatically by the age of seven, when all such difficulties disappear. Piaget thought that the change comes about from children learning from their own behaviour. Making that learning more transparent was the objective of the work we carried out at Edinburgh University. The method we used is described in the empirical part of our monograph. Here is a short example of one of our sequencing tasks. Do you know 
well done, Thomas. That's the first time you've actually gone straight up onto one rung. We compared the performance of five-year-olds with that of seven-year-olds who had no difficulty in sequencing even larger numbers of objects. Now, with transparent measures of how children go from trial and error to success, we were in a position to ask what changes in the child's head between the ages of five and seven? And this is the topic covered in the computational part of our monograph.